come on upon it right there. Right there, plain as day. That is a vehicle. I have your dad. <gasps> really? Yes, ma'am. Dementia, on the other hand, is a slow, gradual impairment in a person's memory. 76-year-old Ralph Brown was last seen Sunday, May 16th. Today, his family and friends spoke about new sightings that are giving them some hope. They are looking for Ralph Brown, the 76-year-old former mayor of Cornelius. He's not been seen since May 16th. His family says he has memory issues and was last seen in a blue Nissan Sentra. We're gonna be jumping into this plane in just a few minutes. Looking for Ralph Brown. This is our day four that we're looking for him. It has now been 10 weeks since he's been missing. Day five, looking for Ralph Brown. We're back on the water over here at Rogers Landing. The Washington County Sheriff's Office wants to remind you to call the non-emergency phone number if you do have information about where Ralph Brown may be. Searchers were back out looking for Ralph Brown today this time on private property in the Hess Creek area. We expand our search area and what we've done for Ralph Brown. He's still out there missing. The entire family is kind of like lost right now. Like, what are we missing? That's a car. We are back working the Ralph Brown case up here in Newburgh, Oregon. Now, Ralph initially is the former mayor up in Cornelius where he went missing and his home was that he lived with his wife. He's been missing for almost one year. We're coming up on it on May 15th, which is only two days away from where we're at right now. The reason why we're coming back to Rogers Landing, if you watch any of our previous episodes, is you know that we've searched this area, but something with that cell phone ping and the information we have from the last moments before it went dead was always around the Rogers Landing area, the 219 area, the Newburgh area. It wasn't 45 minutes to the north where he lives. But we've learned a lot in the past year also with dementia patients. We've also learned a lot about the cell phone pings. 95% of the time when we have a cell phone ping, we're able to solve the case. And so it's been, it's been eating me up. Why can we not solve Ralph Brown? What are we missing here? We know how rivers flow. We know how cars coming into rivers flow and how far out they're going to be. When we started this investigation last year, we came into it two or three months after Ralph went missing. The water levels had already dropped. We're coming back into it just days on the anniversary date of when he went missing with the water levels up. We're up 10 feet from where we were before. So we're coming into it with different eyes, coming into it fresh. If a vehicle goes in and it floats out here, in my opinion, Doug, on this one, if Ralph is here, he's not gonna be any further out than 20 feet and 50 feet down, in my opinion. But one thing that I have a real hard time with on this one is that I know that there's a straight drop off right here. We tried a little underwater drone. We had issues with that that we didn't like, but we've also learned a lot more about sonar and the way that it reads around ledges and drop-offs. So what if the windows were down, the car's not going to float as long, and it was just a slow, gradual in, and then he hits that drop-off that drops off 25 feet from there, and we've just simply missed him right here. We also have a new piece of technology that we're gonna be start using it's really more for finding bodies that are in the water, not necessarily vehicles. However, it will detect vehicles as well. But we're coming into the spring season where there's a lot more drownings. Last year, if you were following us, there were seven drownings in seven days just here in Oregon alone. This little device called the Aquai out of Canada, they've sent us one to test out and use. We've, some, so we've seen some other fire departments using them with success, but you put it in the water and it's gonna be about a two minute scan from this direction for a 180, and it's gonna tell you, do we have an object there? And not just an object, but if it's an X, it's gonna be like, oh, 
that's a person that is right there. Now, will it detect Ralph Brown in a vehicle? No, but will it detect an actual vehicle? Absolutely. So I'm gonna first use that on this little wall right here. Instead of doing a sideways scan, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna do a sideways scan that way. I'm also gonna run it with a scan that way and we'll see if it picks up on anything. So where do we go from here if we do not find Ralph? Well, we have learned a lot this past year with dementia patients, their behavior. We do not believe that he's going to be up in the mountains like, you know, Virginia Collier. She was found three years later up in the mountains. But we here in Oregon, we have such a huge hiking and hunting community. I don't think that's what we have in this case. I'm more drawn to taking the 219 further down. He's, he knows 219 and the last cell phone ping had him moving south. And so in this instance, we have 219 that drops right into Salem, right into West Salem, and there's a boat ramp right there. And on this last trip, or the last couple trips we took, we found three of the 20 or of the 11 that we found the last six, eight months, were all at a dead end boat ramp where the road ended there. And that's what we have down in Salem. Now being from Oregon, we have never ever searched the Salem boat ramp in the three years that we have now been doing the environmental cleanups and working cold cases. So as I mentioned, if we do not find Ralph Brown here, we're gonna be moving down into Salem, into a territory that we've been wanting to search for a long time, and hopefully we'll be able to bring Ralph home today. So I've already tested this out a couple of times. What I have found on this, just to bring everybody up to how we're gonna be using this today. It has different range settings. So it has a short range, which is up to 10 meters. It has a long range, which is 100 and, if I push that right there, 50 meters, which is 150 feet. And then a medium range, which is 20 meters, which is 60 feet. Right now we're about 45 feet from this side of the dock to the other side. So that's why I'm gonna be using the medium range and we're gonna pop it in the water. When I do so, I'm gonna hold the trigger on this and then we're gonna do a nice slow 60 to 90 seconds up to two minutes as we slowly turn this 90 to 100 degrees. And now with scanning, once you hold the trigger down, it should be you know, a minute for a 90 degree angle, two minutes for a 180 degree angle. So we'll kind of speed this up for you guys. <clears throat> All right, so we let go of the uh, button here. Now remember I was talking about the uh, O's. The O's are like, hey, we might have an object over there. And then the X's are like, hey, if we have a body down here, that's what that's going to give you. But of course, I'm gonna say right now, we don't have like, you know, five, six bodies down there. So we're gonna switch over to the heat map and let it really tell us and give us a representation as to what's going on in the water over there. So we're gonna hold the middle button down, heads over to a heat map. And now as we look at this heat map, you can see that we have an entire line of pillars there. You can see the pillars on the other side. You can see the dock that we've been scanning. And we're looking for patterns on this. Like nothing is popping out that's out of the ordinary that would say, oh, we have a great big car over there on screen. Everything is consistent. We have the row of pilings right there. And if you look right there, you have the row of pilings. You have the additional dock that's over here. You have the entire dock that's right here. So no vehicle. Now that was at this angle here. Now we know that it drops off and it gets down, you know, 25, 30 feet here. So now let's take it, let's scan it again, and let's go a little bit deeper. All right, so bring it up. You can see that, you know, a couple points, I scanned a little too fast here, and it's showing that we have one object down there that I was pointing at that might be of interest that is 12 meters out. 12 meters is 36 feet out, but we also have depth here. So let's switch this over to the heat map mode, or what do they call this, the, the echo search or something. And what I have is, I don't have anything big and large that's sticking out. 
the only thing we have is just one little dot that's over there but it's not big enough to represent a car so what i'm really interested in now is if a vehicle comes in based upon what we know the vehicle is going to be over there so let's do two things what if the vehicle came in what if it sunk right here just off of the ledge and it ended up on the other side there so let's do a you know kind of a 110 degree scan right there in the corner and then let's do a 270 degree scan over here check it out and see what kind of readings we get from that we're still going to put our boats in the water today but like i said let's see if this uh, picks up on anything that we just simply didn't see last time you know doug as i start to use this i think that one of the things i uh just because the water's so cold rather than doing a 180 and trying to maintain that control all the way I think kind of a, yeah, just little uh, 90s or even, you know, 100 to 110 degree scans. And when we did our training with the Aqua Eye executives, they did tell us that it's very common for, um, it, it's popular on 90 degree scans. So, yeah, so on that initial scan that I just did, nothing's popping up. Now, remember, I was pointed down a lot more too. So we'll pre bring up the uh, little, they, they didn't call it a heat map. It was like an echo scan or echo search is what they called it so let's bump over to that and we have something that's sticking out right over in here but that's on the other side of the dock here if i'm re if i'm reading it right or just on no the no actually, actually this is no i'm sorry this is this is going to be the uh, ramp where it comes down because i was pointing downward so i'm picking up the bottom so if anything, if that's something, it's going to be on the other side over there. But now let's do more of a uh, level scan on it. Look at that stick floating by at the same time I'm doing this. Look at all those misreads that just fired up on there. I'll show you what that was. It was like a uh, weed floating by at that exact moment in time. See how it picks up on the heat map. So right there's where that happened. But anyway, we definitely picked up the uh, you know the dock on the other side. The dock heading out this direction. Oh, look at this right here. So we have the dock right here. Now is this simply the tree that we have right here, or do we have a vehicle right here? What do we have right there? But the dock came out further right there. So I'm going to say it's just more of the dock but it's something to definitely go check out and investigate. So, yeah, but I mean, I've scanned that a million times though, Doug. Like, I don't feel like that's it. If anything, I feel like it's gonna be right off the very end right here. Yeah. You know, last time we were here scanning, I know that there was a log about 50, 50 feet off the dock. It was really length, it gave us a reading as though it could have been a car but then we identified that it was not but we have that did pick up something big and different that i've not noticed before but again until we put the sonar on it we won't actually know so that's what we're gonna go do right now should be coming up to the wall about another 10 feet should be at the wall right now uh, the wall is right below us so it just dropped beautiful readings this morning good come up on the wall I can see the wall plain as day coming up nothing at the base of it clean and clear zero right. concern so we know the Willamette flows north what about over here like right over I've scanned that good and clear like I, I just got done clearing what my concern was which was that wall yeah and there's a wall here that just drops. Like this boat ramp was built and there's like a 15, 20 foot drop, like a sheer wall. It's already 40 feet right here. Yeah, so there's an extra 15 feet out here. Mm -hmm. There's no way it's, it's the not floating. car would have floated this direction upstream at all. Oh no, no, yeah, the Willamette River flows north. So it's coming that way. It's, it's, not, it's not tidal. So there's, there's no ch directions changing here a consistent flow north and we're we're in the same time of year almost to the day that he went missing 
if he would have went in here, you know, conditions are similar to what they were when he went missing right now. I'll tell you though, one reason why we scan up though is because we have that parking lot from up above, like it's, it comes in from a business, a dirt area with a potential to come off into here. We walked it, there was no access, we've scanned it. We didn't see anything out of the ordinary. We're gonna do it again right now though, just to make sure. And let's say, let's say that this is one of those, the car is completely sealed, that this is one of those 10 minute floats. How far are we gonna end up down? In At 10 least minutes? down to the bridge. The other thing that we have in this also, is, is that what if we were still too new and too fresh to when he went missing, but we scan, we, we did it over a six month period though, but cars that go in and they're fresh will read different and they're harder to see as well. But you know, 33 feet deep here, easy read, nice clean bottom. You see a tree log every once in a while right here. The object you were seeing is over here, it's gonna be over here. Yeah, that's what I see it in there. Which is starting to pop up right there, plain as day. Big tree logs and everything. All right, so I've got something right over here. And those are those logs that I, those two that I had before off to the right. I'll come back over the top of them though with live scope and just verify them. You got a good memory. Well, and there's a good, you know, lesson in this right here as well. In that we've had storms and floods and rains and everything, but those two logs are still in the exact same spot. Same thing with the car. When a car goes in, it's like a turtle, hunkers down, water flow goes over it. So it's trying to push it here, but it's pulling it back here with the back eddy as well. So that's why they just simply don't move. Right there. Wow, that's a car. I mean, from that angle, that's a car. Yeah, from that angle, right up against the uh, pylons there. Come back up over it. I mean, if that is, how did we ever miss that before? It's a car or a boat, for sure. I don't ever remember a boat being out here. It does have a pointed front end. But that's that's just a one scan. I could you, we could rescan that and get a better image, and it looked completely different. Oh yeah, I mean I know right where it's at. Is that is that that end pylon? Yeah, it's right at the end of the pylon. I mean right here, it looks like a boat in my opinion. Yeah, let me see. Look, looks like a boat to me. We'll go put on live scan. But that that was not here last time. I don't remember a boat being down here at all. I don't remember that either. But like I said, we'll put live scope or light scan over it. If it is, I'm going to try to justify myself right now. That from what I remember, there was a great big pile of logs and sticks down there. You said that before you even scanned that. Yeah. You said that there was a pile of stuff there. And so I mean, if this is Ralph's car and then it got buried while the floods were here and then we came in after the floods and then now we've had new floods to move the logs off of it. That's my justification right now, if we would have missed it. My fault, 100%. I'll take credit for it. I hope this is a car. I hope this is Ralph. So what we're looking at right here is the other side of the, these are the pylons. These are the logs and the sticks on the other side over there like where Hayden's standing. Ooh, ooh, something in that pile too, look. Oh yes, there sure is. Holy moly. And then, we, and then we're coming up on the boat right about now. You're gonna see the boat on the right-hand side. That what we currently believe is a boat. Pylon, pylon. Right there. Yeah, yeah, that's a boat. Anytime you have that rim, you know? Yeah. We well, just put the live scope on it just to be sure. Yeah. But, but you could clearly see the rim. Yeah. I mean, at first it did look like a car, but we could maybe see the front of the boat, like I said, and then it looks like a boat. It, and now we have the other one up there as well. That that one looks more like the way a vehicle should. Yeah. The other one. I mean, I told you. I mean, I I've been drawn back to this area. Cell phone ping, ninety five percent of the time. No, it's, it's 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 not about how. You know, it's not about how it gets done. The matter is whether or not it gets done. And following your instincts. That's what makes a professional. You know, you develop those instincts. Whether we find them today or not, you're listening to your instincts, you know? 
There's just something that draws us back here. Me, so so we got some type of a no, right there. Look right there. Is that a car upside down, or is that just a log? I mean, it's like really dark. We got a really good scan on that other side. I almost feel like I mean, just look at it as we scan in on this. I'm not, I, I feel like I'm not dealing with a log. Like, I feel like I'm dealing with a car that has piled itself in there with everything. Well, that that's, that's just looks like a bunch of junk. Let's put the live scope on it. The live scope will be able to see right through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or it'll be able to just uh, kind of differentiate what mm -hmm. we're looking at. <clears throat> and there's a lot, there's a lot of debris that flows through here. Yeah. I mean, we're coming up here. Like this huge tree here. Oh yeah, you can see the boat. See the... So th this one's no doubt a boat. Oh, I got it. All right, so let's go check out this other one up here. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Yeah, yeah I see what you're saying. Right up at the front of us? Yeah, yep. that, is, that, is that what we're looking at? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it could be under that one, big one right there, but that other one popping in right there looks like. Yeah, it's more silver. Oh. Uh, more reflective. So. Yeah. Perfect size of a car, too. Uh, it keeps getting longer. So it's not to the right, it's still just to it's the- It's just straight down. Well, just to the left of us, too, still a little bit, too. Let's see if I can spin us into the hole here a little bit like this. And out. Tree, tree. And then it's just looking different. Big tree right there. Right there. Right there, yep. What is that? That's behind us. So it's right here. Do oh, wait a minute. Did you just see a window? Look, right there. I mean, that cannot be ignored. What is that? What is that? What? That, that, is, that is a car or that is the most car looking like brush pile I've ever seen in my life. And then the way, see, see the wheel, see the wheel, see the wheel? And then the way that it, it's absorbing the sonar and representing a different grade of reflection. I mean, look at that, it's like a heat signature so much. Yeah. It's like super, it's like, it's like the sun is shining right on it. Mm -hmm. Look at it from here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. every angle that we're hitting it, knowing that it's 50 feet down and how this is going to look at deeper water, look at the length. Oh, I, I, I see it. And then look at the reflection, the, the, it's... That, that is not a tree. No, that's, that's, that's not a tree. It, it is, it is the most tree looking like See, like right there, it just blends out and it looked like it's just a pile of debris. Well, that's debris there, yeah, I mean, all day long, that's debris. That's why you do what you do. Learn everyone. You know, a, 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 a real professional develops instincts. Instincts is what brought us back here, correct? All right, so you it, don't, don't feel like that whatsoever. Not at all. Don't even let yourself go there. Come on up on it, yep. right there. Right there, plain as day. That is a vehicle all day long. Holy freaking crackers. Yes. We did. Wow. I, I don't I don't feel good about it though. Why not? Because I've been over here three times before. It doesn't matter. You found out where he wasn't and we knew where to look this time. I've looked here though, that's the issue. There was people here a lot of the time, yeah? It doesn't matter if people are here or not. I missed a vehicle in here before. It's 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 ninety percent a car, for sure. Like we just need to put a magnet on it. I don't think a magnet's gonna hook on it. I think we have to get. And that, we got a really good a clear magnet. reading over here. You need a monster magnet in this, and I bet you could just go right off the dock. Off the dock. I, I think it's more on this side though. 
I mean, well, because that reading you got, I, I yeah, were on. I, well, but I'm I'm getting a better reading over here because I'm not in the debris pile. Right. On side. Right. So Sorry. let's just let me, right, right. Hold on, hold on. Right where the right where this little bunny is. Yeah. I mean, is the bunny our sign today? So you had the pylon. Look, it, it's right there. It's upside down, plain as day. Right there. Right next to the pylon. So if you just go straight down the pylon, yeah. you're, you're gonna be able to touch it. You yeah. Know, yep. I see you don't that. even need a magnet. Oh. And there's no other car that's gonna be out here, except for Ralph, in my opinion. Unless this is a brand new car. Now you always say that you have to look the family 100% in the face and areas cleared. Does I, this I, I, make I, you feel uncredible? I looked the family in the eye on this one and I told them 100% I have cleared Roger's landing two or three times and I felt so confident in it. Is it going to make me, if this is Ralph, is it going to make me second guess everything I have ever done? 100%. Do I, am I eaten up about it? 100%. One of the things that Doug and I were talking about in the boat before we got, came back to shore here is, is it, you know, the fact of this is, is that we're, we know more now than we did six months ago, 12 months ago, and that we took it, we took that knowledge, we took that gut instinct, we took the investigative skills that we've acquired, and we continue to grow and we continue to learn. What scares me is not that I missed him the first time. What scares me is, is that, you know, I did let the family down. How many times have you been here at Rogers Landing? Three times. Because, because something kept drawing me back here. A cell phone ping. And one of the things as we've been out the past year, working more of these cases with dementia, with cell phone pings, that is what brought us back here, is that we have helped so many other families and that we have not yet forgotten about Ralph. He's in our own backyard. And, and we're, we're in, you know, we're developing those instincts and learning from them case by case and not forgetting about cases and knowing that we're learning and coming back. Like in, in Jared and I both talk like it's, 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 it's cell phone ping. Like it's like there's something not sitting right. It's, it's unexplainable, those type of instincts. And that's what brought us back here today. Also, we also we're working with a newer piece of a you know that you know what that GP that unit isn't on here this is the same unit we had you know it, these are just instincts that have been developed man that are just and yeah, you can't how to, describe how to read, them how to read the car differently we know how to read vehicles differently than we did a year ago we're looking for that reflection we kept talking about it out on the water we're looking for a reflection we're looking for shapes we found a boat that wasn't here last time when you when Ralph first went missing you know his vehicle is newer. A newer vehicle obviously reads different than a vehicle that's been down underwater for four years. And we that has something to do with you not being able to discover it because the case was so new. 100% that could play into it. I don't want to use that as a crutch. I already set the stage as we were out on the water. We may have already included it in this edit. I 100% set the stage of, hey, let me already start making excuses of, it was a newer case. We know that vehicles read differently when they're fresh versus when they're a little bit older. But I don't want that to be a crutch or an excuse. I want to be able to go out on every case, whether it's a week old or whether it's, you know, you know, 10 years old and be able to identify it exactly the same. stuck on the log that I'm not getting over this way. Is that not this casting right there? Let's take it to, this, to the other side of that pylon just a little bit. And to bring, to bring you guys back into the Ralph Brown case, if, we've done eight episodes on this search. The links will be in the description below to bring you guys back into what we've done so you can get caught up. However, we're looking for a 2014 dark blue Nissan Versa. The size of this vehicle fits a Versa. Absolutely, like to the T. 
license plate on it is 319 KQV. This is gonna be one of the one of the danger, most dangerous dives we've ever done. There's a lot of current in here and a whole lot of debris. This is more dangerous than the creek that we were in on James and Mabale. 40 feet deep, all of this debris and the current, it may not look like it on camera, but the current is ripping through here. Yeah, I think that the current's too strong that it's pushing my this magnet. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna look at it on um, oh. live scope, see what it's doing. Yeah, I feel like it, I feel like if you just go down on the pylon, you're gonna be able to touch it. Just go down on the pylon and come back on the pylon. Well, I, I still want to put a magnet on it. Yeah, you know, magnet it right here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let me go grab something and pop that and get another magnet. Yeah. So we're not hitting anything right there. I'm not even seeing your monster magnet. Yeah, I'm because I'm right below you. Okay. See yeah. right there? Yeah, yeah. So which way do I need to go? Yeah. So you're past the car. Or where's the car at? No, the car's right there. Where? On your screen. Right here. That's the car. So I need to come forward a little bit then, right? Yeah. Move, move your sonar. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's on this other side of the dock. It's not on this side. Yeah, it's right there. Yep. With this knuckle, it is right underneath that knuckle right there. Up, oh, I see it, I see it. You just to the left of it, just to the left. The current took it almost like you're over it. So come, take like five steps to your right. Yeah, you're on it. You're on it now. Yep, we're on it. Yep, you're on it. I think, hold on. Yep, we're on it. Yeah, you're on the front end, or, or you're on the end of it. Well, I see it. Right where this little bunny is. I mean, is the bunny our sign today? Carrie Mae Parker episode. There were balloons on the causeway right off the shore, 30 feet, basically, from where her vehicle was. I mean, it, it, it's happened before. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to get all into, you know, superstition or some, you know, you know, extra energy at play here. But I mean, if this is what we're looking for, I mean, that's absolutely a sign of some sort. Is it a coincidence? I, I, I don't know. I don't know that you guys have to decide that. But it's it, it's obviously significant we're found right above where his car was directly underneath of us, directly where we find the car. So the next step in this is to have Doug suit up. We're gonna put him down on the car, identify, is this the Nissan Sentra that we've been looking for? And the moment that it is, we're gonna identify what windows are up, what windows are down. Can we identify if Ralph is in the vehicle? We're gonna gather all that information, come to the surface. We're gonna contact the local authorities, let them know what we have found. And you know, Tualatin Valley, they have an incredible team, a dive team. I don't think that we're gonna be doing this recovery. They're gonna be doing the recovery, in my opinion at this point, and uh, they're gonna bring Ralph home today, if indeed that's his vehicle and he's inside. So he's currently at 30 feet right now. 
Still making the way down the pylon. Maybe 25 feet. So he's still on the pylon, which is good with this current. That he's sucked in behind the little eddy on it. He's at 32 feet right now. Come up on 35 feet right now. He's kicking really good, like I can see him kicking, like hard. But he's up, he's up above some tree logs, he's not gone down below them, so we have, at 35 feet, we have a set of trees that's there, and he's not going below that yet. And the car's at 40 to 45 feet. So he, he's not broken through 35 feet yet that I see. So I don't know if he's caught on something. Like I don't see him on the car, I see him at the, Maybe it's just the angle. At that angle, it looks like he's fine. And at this other angle, it looks like he's not. Okay, now, now he's starting to move. So he's about five feet off the pylon. It appears to be on the car there. Swimming around it, okay. Yeah, he's holding on to it, I can see. So he's facing upstream, he's coming back to the pylon. Doug, Doug is really thorough in you know, doing his preliminary investigation around the vehicle as well to make sure that you know, what windows are up, which way is it laying, what's going to be the best way to rig it and pull it. A lot goes into this in order to uh, prepare for the uh, recovery, whether we're doing it or we're just simply giving the information over to law enforcement or the local dive team. We want to give them as much as we can. All right, he's coming up. Oh. You alright? You gonna rest for a second? I don't see nothing. What? I don't see anything. You were so close, it looked like you were on it. Did you make it all the way down? Because it looked like you were still on top of a tree. You were on the bottom? I'm on the bottom. Were you kicking backwards like this? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going straight down. There's trees everywhere. Yeah. So at like 30 feet, there's trees zigzagged across the pylon. Right, so I saw you stuck at like 30, 35 feet. Yeah, like so, but, but when, I'm, when I squeeze my way down through the trees, yeah. I'm on the ground. Okay. So I know I'm on the ground. And then I gotta come up over. First of all, I'm, I'm engraving the trees, that way I can find my way around. And I know where I'm at, because it's, like, it's intense. Right. So I mark my first couple X's on the trees, because I know I'm leaving this, I don't have no line. I come up over the first couple of trees, and I'm using my feet to go around and to run into a few things. I go and check them, right here, tree. Big tree, then I go under, bottom. And it's not a false bottom, it's, it's, it's the bottom. And then I come back to the pole, you know, I'm just going in and out slowly, marking, you know, that way I'm not losing my way. And I come out this way with my feet, when I run into is still another tree. Uh, I mean, unless it's way over here, which is not, it's showing that it's touching the pylon. It's not touching the pylon. Well, not touching the pylon, but it's it, it's 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 within it's, five feet of the pylon. It's, absolutely. Right. And I'm I, I'm going farther than five feet, like this. I would say it covered at least eight feet. Is it farther out that way? It it, it, it could be. When you guys were first tagging it. It was where that little blue mark is right there on that side of the dock. Okay. Well, let me take the boat out. Why don't you work on some fresh air? I'll take Matt with me, and we're just going to. We're, we're, I'm going to find it. We maybe, have to maybe we're looking at it wrong. Yeah. I mean, what I'm feeling down there is not what we're seeing on sonar, and it's right. it's not. Or I would be like, yeah, maybe we got it wrong. There's that. Uh, no, I, we we clearly we clearly have the width, the length, and the height of a vehicle. Yeah. Like we've not misidentified a vehicle. Yeah. The only thing I could think of is somehow it's it, and it happened with the James where I didn't, you know, the pylon and the vehicle and looking straight down, it, it, it looked real weird. 
maybe it's right here. And it would make sense that it's over here. I thought, uh, yeah. Okay, let me... Because uh, I, I did this. So from, from here, yeah. I did all of this eight feet. Right. And, and that, that's, from what we're looking at, that's, I should have ran right into it. Right. We'll take the magnet with us. We can't do a grappling hook because we've caught things. Yeah, yeah. We've caught that on this, the wrong this, stuff before. This, so this, is, this is intense down there. There are trees upon trees in there. Yeah. All right. We'll do that. I nailed it. Oh, you're totally on it. Yeah, that, that's not a tree. That's not bouncing. You're not wedged in. So you were too far, you were too far under the dock. So, in my opinion, Doug is on the car this time. So that's good news. We're straight over it. All right, he's at the front of it now. I can clearly see that he is on the car. So yeah, so the car was farther out here and not under the bridge or the dock. Doug's coming up, Doug's coming up. You found them. Wow. Nice work, Doug. 319 KQV, Ralph Brown's car. Wait, what can we do for you? He didn't get there. All the windows are intact. That's good news. The trunk is open, but all the windows are intact. Okay. Upside down? Upside down. The magnet, I didn't move. It is all, It is inside the upper lip of the tire. It is not moving. Okay. So, I, you know, if I didn't move it, it's, it's there. It's legit. Um, we found Ralph Brown, man. We found him. Good. Hello? Hi, Lori. It's Jared. Hey. I have your dad. <gasps> really? Yes, ma'am. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I've not called uh, the authorities yet. You were my first call. I'm letting you know. Um, I, I was just drawn back to Rogers Landing. Like, I, I, that cell phone ping, with everything that we've done this last year, I felt like I was miss, missing something. And I have his plate in hand right now. Doug's not even out of the water yet. Come down. Where I'm going to call 911 and get them down here as well, okay? Okay. Well, I'm... My mom and I are in West Virginia right now, but I can call my brother. Yeah, wh whatever family support you'd like, go ahead and send them down. Let them know. Give them my number, okay? Yeah, they found him. Yeah. So. And Rogers landing. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the, the vehicle right now, Lori, is it's, uh, 30, yeah. 35 to 40 feet underwater. Yeah. To, to give you an idea of where it's at, when you walk down the left dock and you come down three to four pillars or pylons that's where it's at and it's right right there oh my gosh so all the way you know you know this is like right before the year yes we, we're, I'm, yeah, I'm very much aware yeah <laughs> wow so all the way that's all of, oh my gosh all of the windows are right now intact so we've not broken out yeah. any windows we're not going to but we're going to do everything we can to work with the uh, Twalton Valley, you know, fire dive team. Right. To advise okay. them the best way for this to come out. <sighs> okay. Well, I'm going to call my brother right now oh. and let him know what's going on. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I cannot thank you enough. All right. Yeah, yeah. Take care of what you need to with the family and then uh, yeah, get a hold of whatever you need from me. Let me know, okay? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. What's the location of your emergency? Yeah, Rogers Landing in Newburgh. Relentlessness to accomplish the impossible makes it possible, you know? We're being relentless. Right, right now, 
doesn't matter that we never found them the first couple. What of matters years. is we did. That we did. Yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah. I'm Doug. Doug, Sam. Sam, for me. Hey, Jared. Uh, so he was just kind of giving me the update. You guys are thinking of coming all the way down to like the paddle access? Or no, straight it's up straight, straight up. Yeah, so a straight shot underneath the Watch pylons and where it's at. Yeah. So passenger rear wheel okay. is what we have a magnet line attached to. It's inside, kind of tucked up underneath the wheel well right now. So it's on the outside of the dock here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like straight down, to be honest. Yeah. And, and so the the driver's side then is yeah, going to be so, right here. Yeah, so oh, it's upside down. Oh, okay. Um, when I did my did the identification, making sure it's our vehicle. Just based off plate. Based yeah, off we, plate. Yeah, we got the yeah. plate right here. Make model. Um, it's a blue Nissan. Uh, with the license plate we did the assessment of the vehicle so we can determine you know how to accurately recover it all the windows are intact okay. so um, in this scenario in the past when we've done this is to just lightly pull it that way you know being as though it's upside down floating it you run the risk of losing control of the vehicle okay. and also the contents of the vehicle We're breaking out the windows okay. because the vehicle's been down there and it's going to be weak and bust the windows out okay. so pulling it along the bottom you're not losing anything. And worst case scenario, if pulling it this way, like right where they're standing, I put a rotator right there where that bench is, line directly here to it, right underneath our feet, and pull it right up the embankment. And in doing so, the back window may come out, but nothing's gonna come out of it because it's being pushed. There'll be a little bit of mud that gets right there, but that that's the safest scenario okay. of not you know, running the risk of losing it, the evidence that's in the vehicle, you know. There's only one, because I'm assuming you're, you're needing like, that's more than just a regular tow truck. I, I have a rotator. But we already have a rotator yeah. on standby for yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. yeah. If you need them, if you have your own that's on call, great. There aren't not, many here. There aren't yeah. many here. I mean, I'd have to call Gales. Who's the, is it? Northwestern Tony. Oh, Northwestern. Yeah. Like, I'm not familiar with yeah. him, but I would yeah. say just get them. Yeah, yeah. Was, okay. Uh, today's not the day to start learning how to do stuff so yeah yeah so i have northwestern towing that will be here you're going to be bringing their rotator and a rollback as well uh it should be here in about 30 45 minutes now do you want them ripping some of those trees out of there and if we do then we might pull the magnet I'm, off of I'm not worried about the trees at the top i'm worried about all the trees at the bottom which they're not going to move oh this this when that you, is going to be When the you problem. went down, how did you have to weave to get to the car on this last drop? Um, there's, it's, it's fine. It's clear to get to the car. So you had a straight, straight shot, shot down. Okay. Yeah. So so but I just need on to the get... other between between the car and there, yeah. fifty trees. So wh where I hook this car up has to be like, hopefully it holds. Like I, I'm going to put it on the most strongest part of the car. It, 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 there's a possibility it could just rip apart. There's that many trees. Hopefully the trees just move. This chain looped around your line. I'm gonna drop it right now, both of them. Both of them, right on the wheel. And that's gonna land right on the passenger rear wheel. And then once you fasten them together underneath, you're bringing them together. And then Jimmy's line is going to be sitting down there waiting for you as well. So really we need to put Jimmy's line down first because that's the last thing that you're touching. Yeah. And then you'll pull this chain, fasten yeah. it. This chain, yeah. fasten it. Yeah. Jimmy's hook. We just need to make sure that we have Jimmy's line enough slack so that when we drop it, it's not pull dropping. Right. It's just a drop. You well, know? Yeah, they'll be able to do that. By yeah, because his line with, like. with, with slack in it isn't going to be any more pull than what I did on that line. Right. You know? Okay. I like that plan. Just 
like that. <laughs> Megan, are we hugging? I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> Yes, you're welcome. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, so. How you doing? I'm Jared. I'm Alan. Okay. Alan. This is my husband, Alan. Yeah. yeah. Alan, that's me. Um, right now, we're really hopeful that he's in there. All the yeah. windows are up, you know, yeah. based upon everything that we've ever done. You know, nothing would indicate otherwise at this moment in time. So okay. that's what we're hopeful for. Okay. Um, the vehicle is currently upside down. Okay. In 35 feet. The bottom of it is at 35 feet. The, the top at the bottom is at 40 feet right now. Okay. So I would say, you know, it's great to see you again. It's good to have you back. Mm -hmm. I mean, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, this is always a, you know, I hate using the word bittersweet, you know, but it's a bittersweet thing that, yeah. you know, that we're, we've come together again. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, I'm glad. I'm glad that you didn't give up. Thank you so much for not giving up. Do you have any more family that's coming down today? No, we're Just it. the two of you? All right. Yeah. It was very, very sudden. All right. So well, if you need any, we do have umbrellas if you need any. Or, or there's trees or whatever you need, let us know. Okay. Um, uh, with the, you know, we come into this with the... Um, they didn't give up and they kept, they kept searching and I really, I, I can't thank them enough for what they've done. I really appreciate them. So uh, thank all of you guys for being here. Obviously, we know you have to be here, but it's a community effort. You know, Northwestern Tone donating their time and their services. We wouldn't be able to do it without you. Um, obviously, we know we have Ralph Brown's vehicle, and the vehicle is the windows are closed. Uh, so in protecting the integrity of the contents of the vehicle is our number one priority in recovering the vehicle. And in doing so, you know how we recover the vehicle it has to be very meticulous. Um, the vehicle is upside down. It's 150 feet from the shoreline, 40 feet below the surface. I'm going to rig the two rear tires, which I already have a line that will guide me down to it. Once I have it rigged, all the tow truck line will already be down on it. When I'm up topside, we'll begin to slowly turn the vehicle and then bring it up close to shore. Um, at that point, we'll do another assessment on the vehicle if we need to rig all four wheels and lift it up and out, we'll do that then. If we don't, we'll let it come up on the shore, you know, the way we deem necessary at that point. You know, it's a, it's a recovery, so we can't account for everything. And in a recovery, you never can. But what we can do is be as safe and possible every step of the way, and, you know, as thorough, because it's, it's a crime scene until it's proved otherwise. So, you know, to you guys, protecting the evidence I know is key. Ralph is a former Cornelius mayor, teacher, and is very involved in his community. And I just want to lift up prayers that uh, wherever Ralph is, he feels accompanied uh, by the presence of God. sure all my rigging's down there so when I get down there I'm rigging it I'm not coming up and back there's a lot of trees and debris very unsafe very extremely dangerous so the less time that I'm down there the less fooling around the safer okay I'm confirmed for one chain down chain two There you go.
turn these lights off. Yep. This is a problem. Okay. Uh, we're good. There's a massive tree right here. Okay. So what we did is we fed everything over the tree. Everything's compromised right now, including our line. So, um, give me two more chains. What we're gonna do is, uh, I know what you're gonna do. Yeah, I'm gonna go down with extra other rigging. Yeah. I'm gonna bring it up to that rigging and we'll pull it off. Yep. Including the tree that is on. Yeah. You know, but when I so, take so, down, so. we'll just bypass. Yeah, so, so you're, you're, so what's yeah. happening, to, as far as I understand, yeah. you're taking two new chains down the line that you're guiding down as you're going down. I have, I have a roadblock on our line. Everything's right there. Yeah, and so you're not putting it on the line. You're just holding it in your hand going down. Yeah. yeah. Once you make it down, and I'm feeding 40 feet from up above here yep. on a new 40-foot strap. Yep. And when I come up. And then when you come up, now you're grabbing this from me, yep. and then you're going to take it to the hook, yep. hook it to the hook, and we're yep. pulling everything. Yeah. Yeah. Confirmed. I'll be back. He should be there now. Pulling anymore. Nice and tight. The vehicle is now rigged. Jimmy, we're good. The pull. All these trees. See all these trees coming with it? We're, we'll, we'll know here shortly what we have. There's a lot of stuff that's moving underneath the water. There's our buoy that was on the car. Like that's pulling really fast in my opinion. Like, what, what's your feeling on that, Doug? I believe we got everything. Should be breaching right now. My chains are through that blue strap. Like, you got gas right, right here on your right, right underneath of you. You got bubbles right in front of you. You should see the chain coming up right here. See the shackle? Now you should start seeing some chains attached to that blue line right there. That's the back of the car. Yeah. The car has held together the entire time. Nothing's moved. I'm gonna get that. And here. If we can, come on, get in. Locked in. I got this one around the, the bottom one, and then we can loosen that one and redo it. All right, that's not coming off. The blue line's not coming off. I just need to make, I need to assess these windows when we get it up more. Yep, go ahead. There we go. All right, right there, leave right there.
Driver's side window is still intact. Still intact? Yes. Good, it's coming out. At this point, it's gonna be, instead of dragging up over the hill, we're gonna leave it, level it out and pick it up in the air and then we end up driving the truck forward with it in the air. Windshield wants to come out. Let the water run out. All right, you're good. The windshield is still in. Hey, we're gonna let it drain. Yep. Yeah, a lot of pressure on that windshield right now. All right, you're good. Water's out.
So um, one of my earliest memories with um, my Papa Ralph was um, we used to set out these pillows on the ground and we used to wrestle with each other. Um, and one day at a retirement party for him, uh, I got to speak and stand, stand in front of everyone and I told everyone that I love my Papa because he wrestles with me. You could go across the nation and people would recognize him. I'm, I'm glad, I'm, I'm happy for, about the outcome today. Um, not happy about the outcome overall, but happy that this is how this story ends, um, is that we were able to have a, a, some closure and it, it didn't take years and years and years. We were able to get what we needed today, so. Thank you.